Hello and welcome back to Maltmiller HQ. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Tom Bacon from Bathhas X. And today we're going to be discussing advanced hot products. So last night we had one of our Meet the Supplier events that was held in conjunction with Redden Amateur Brewers at the Double Barreled Tap Room in Redden. Absolutely fantastic evening. Tom, you gave a, a great presentation there and we wanted to make sure that that presentation was documented in a video so that we can share it with the rest of our customers. Tom, just before we uh, jump into the nuts and bolts of the video, you have packed in some serious experience so far in your career. Can you just give us a, a little bit of a talk through of where you've been and what you've done? Hi, I'm Tom from Bathhouse X. Um, been with the company coming up to a year now, but previous to that I was with Wonder Beyond, producing some Imperial Stouts for two years before that. And uh, before that, I was with Brew York for just over two years. Uh, and then before that, I was with... So, sorry, just to interrupt you there. So that you were at Brew York at the very... More very the beginning, very yes, yeah. I was uh, one of the first employees there when we were a team of, I think, six. And then when I left, we were a team of 50. Yeah, okay. So saw you see that expansion. The, saw the expansion real, yeah, uh, there. And then previous to that, I was with Meantime and uh, Asahi Brewers Group. So that's your Peroni and your Pilsner Raquel's uh, sense to Barnas as well. And... Uh, Tisky that no one seems to talk about no. either. So uh, classically trained? Yes, yes. So my initial degree is in bioinorganic analytical chemistry. Yeah. Yep. I love saying that. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> it? um, and then from there, I progressed from a home brewer to turning semi-professional. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like a massive amount of experience yeah. packed into quite a short time. Uh, about 10 years yeah. in um, brewing or in craft beer. And then previous to that, I was in hospitality as long as I can really remember, starting off in working men's clubs. Awesome, so packing all that experience now into selling products for Bath House sounds yep. like an excellent position to be yes. in. It's working with the small guys, with Bath House X, it's working with home brewers and home brew suppliers like yourselves. It's the nicest part of the industry. So there's been some massive advancements in hot products over the last couple of years and so lucky to be involved with Bath House X being a partner of theirs and being able to offer what's available to the commercial Bath House X commercial customers now are being offered in the homebrew market as well. And this is absolutely fantastic. So can we just talk about some of the products that are available and where they're used in the brewing process. We've got hot side products and we've got cold side products. Let's, let's look at the hot side products first. So if we begin at kind of the unsung hero of the advanced product range, uh, the Flex. Yeah. Um, kettle bittering, it's consistent, 65% alpha acid. It's an incredible under, underdog and an unsung hero. of every, I think every brewer in the country, as well as home brewer, can benefit from it. Just having that standard level of consistent bitterness in the background. Just to put it in perspective, you can put 15 grams into a a thousand liters and get 22 IBUs. Yeah. It's just an incredible product. Um, and just for consistency. Yeah. Um, we don't need to worry about using um, bittering hops and the consistency from year to year. Actually, we've been using it for a couple of years now. Mm. And, and actually, as a, a bittering product, clean bittering is absolutely fantastic. And it's really, really easy to use. In fact, it really for those customers that are using something like Magnum, for example, they're using it because it's a really clean bitter in hop in many different beer, beer, beer styles. But just take a West Coast IPA, for example, you might use something like Magnum up front just to give that bitterness with many more hops being used later on through the boil as a replacement for that. It's absolutely fantastic. Well, it's, I find myself talking to a lot of brewers who are doing 60 minute boils, 90 minute boils, and you're putting something in at 90 minutes, 60 minutes, you're boiling all the other aroma and all the beta acids out of it. You might as well use something that's just efficient and you're going to get the consistent use throughout rather than wasting your money and your yield on uh, using leaf hops or T90s. Yeah. In fact, actually, what we find is because the dosage is so small on a homebrew level, mm. we've had to come up with ways of being able <laughs> to measure that small amount out. 
um, which is where we're kind of where we're at right at the moment. So we're developing ways of making it easier to use in the homebrew world. It's actually a really exciting product. Yes, it's when you do the initial calculations, you're looking at the amounts and going, tiny, isn't it? really? Like, and you're just saving so much in yield and saving so much in cleaning as well. Yeah, I'm yeah, trying sure. to struggle with your kettle yeah. or anything like that because it's just a quick wipe around at the end rather than yeah. having to dig out by hand your spider. So that's Flex, 100% hop derived product, clean bittering, uh, used at the start of the brewing process but it's not variety specific. No, no. So if we want variety specific, where do we go to? So the next stage in the brewing is going to be looking at the Whirlpool bittering. Um, we've got a product called Incognito, yeah. which is developed by our American branch about two, three years ago. Um, so it's variety specific. So what we do is we take the hops, we fractionally distill them, taking out all of the vegetative matter yeah. and just getting the alpha, the beta and the oils out. This is variety specific. We're using the exact varieties that are said. It is all the good stuff that you want from a hop without any of the vegetative matter, which of course is gonna soak up your beer. It's going to not be utilized completely. The thing that someone said to us the other week was when you, dry, uh, when you put into a whirlpool and you take it out and you can still smell the oils on the hops, yeah. you're not getting the utilization. With incognito adding this at the Whirlpool, you're getting the full utilization of it. You need to put it in just below 84 because it is quite high in alpha unless you want to, you know, yeah, you want get the bitterness. Get the bitterness. Yeah. I'll put in just a little bit low, uh, lower below the isomerization point. And the smell is always amazing on these products. Um, it's about a six to one ratio. Yeah. Uh, so you can replace six kilos with one kilo of incognito, which is just, your storage is gone down yeah. rather than having a freezer or a fridge just filled with hop samples you can have just one kilo which yeah. just makes which is exactly why we sell them in 16 gram packaging which is that re that's relating back to which should be one 100 grams of hops one dose it yeah you got in it. that one um so yeah it's a great product we have been experimenting using it into fermentation and to using it as a dry hop some guys are using that very uh, very successfully it's something we're working on to be able to get a white paper together to be able to talk about it so that's going to be interesting to yeah. see coming up and it's all made on site in yakima valley the hops come straight off and straight in made into incognito so in actual use tom hmm? so used in the whirlpool at the at 84 or below yeah. as you said um with some pellets helps just a little bit of yeah. vegetative matter. Um, so like the other week I was brewing with a brewery called Squawk in Manchester and I was saying to them, you just need a handful. Yeah. And we were on a eight barrel kit and we're going, really? It's like literally just a handful. Just that little bit of vegetative matter really helps it. You can use it without. It, I, it's just so it much better. It doesn't disperse as well without. It doesn't disperse, so it, yeah. It, it clings onto the vegetative yeah. matter. It needs something just to chase it around, yeah, is yeah. what we say. So on a homebrew level, we're just looking at like a few pellets into the, into the world. Yeah, absolutely. At the same time, a leaf. Yeah, we'll at, at the, same time, as the yeah. same time as the incognito, yeah. and that helps it disperse. That was incognito. Again, 100% hop-derived product that is variety-specific used in the whirlpool. Let's move further into the brewing process. Cold side product, what do we use for this? So cold side, we have a product called Spectrum. I think it's probably the most famous of our advanced products. Seems to be something that's getting a lot of uh, traction right now. 100% hop derived liquid dry hopping. I mean, when we're looking at the uh, dry hopping rates of some beers now, when we're talking 30 grams per litre, yeah, yeah. and being able to replace that with a liquid that is going to disperse fully and fully be utilized in that beer without having to get the losses. It's just an amazing product. It's about eight to one, the ratio on that. Yeah. Uh, sometimes a little bit higher, sometimes a little bit lower, depending on, you know, depending on your brewing process. It, like we're saying, it is variety specific. It works best alongside of pellets, just like what we're saying with the incognito, just to um, cling to those vegetative matter and not to cling to the side of the tank. Uh, but yeah, it depends. It's quite interesting because it really does vary where you put it in, in fermentation. If you put it right at the end, you get those green notes that some people like, that real hoppy yeah, bite. Raw. 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 Yeah. But some people absolutely love that and that's what they're going to support. Yeah. If you put in just at the end of primary fermentation, beginning of secondary fermentation, you unlock these big juicy 
notes and that's where I, I enjoy it going in the most. So Tom, we're talking about um, biotransformation with this product just to the same as we're talking about biotransformation with any other any hop product. It's, these are 100% hop derived. Yeah. We get asked a lot when we're talking about these of how different malt bills will interact, with it, how different yeasts will interact. These are hops. Yeah. They will interact the exact same way as they will with normal T90s or BBCs. This, I want to reiterate the point that all these are is 100% the good stuff with none of the vegetative matter. One of the things that um, we found when we've been experimenting with these products is actually the fade off of flavor in the beer after packaging is massively improved. Um, the stability is massively improved using these products. Why is that? Do we know why that is? It's to do with the stability of the product and the interaction with the proteins in the, in the beer itself. Yeah. It just doesn't drop out as much. You are also removing some of the phenolic compounds that you don't really want in, so it tends to be a little bit more stable. The other thing that uh, has been a great discovery with Spectrum is it completely eliminates hop creep because there's no sugar, yeah. there's nothing vegetative on it. So yeah, you get the enzymes, there's no, 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 yeah. So you get absolutely no hop creep, um, which for some people has become quite a massive issue yeah. on, a, on a commercial side as well as a homebrew side. Sure, yeah. Um, so yeah, Spectrum, it's fantastic. It smells great. It fully disperses as soon as you put it in. Uh, and keep an eye out for the Bathhouse branded spatulas as yeah. well for, <laughs> for mixing it together. The products that we've looked at so far are to do with bitterness, flavour and aroma, but hops can also be used as a process aid as well. So it's quite interesting. We have several different products and several different process aids. Um, best seller and the one that <laughs> so many breweries use is called Hop Aid. It's something that I was once told, if you only notice that you didn't use it when you forget to put it in. Like it has complete flavorless, it's just a fantastic product. We were talking earlier about Reiki's beer climbing out yeah, of the fermenter. Massive mess, yeah. Um, when we were at uh, Double Barrel last night, Jim was saying he puts it in every single beer that comes out of Double Barrel. It's a fantastic product that when you are strapped for volume and you're needing to squeeze every single litre out of those fermenters, just putting this in will really, really help and increase your capacity. So actually, this is a real common problem in the homebrew world. Um, if you look through the Facebook groups and so on, you will see loads of photos of fermenters, massive blow off and, and, and krausen all over the place. Actually, this product can really, really help. Really, really help. Um, it came up last night as well with uh, propagating of yeast yeah. as well and it blowing off, yeah, actually, even a those, couple of drops. Yeah, so actually when we're making a yeast starter in a conical flask, a couple of drops in that conical flask when we're making that stops it trying to climb, Massively out, climb helps. out of the flask. Yeah. And it's going to save you time, it's going to save you effort, it's going to save you a lot of cleanup yeah. as well. The last product we're going to look at is massively important in the commercial world. Um, it also has some, some re relevance and fun in the homebrew world. Tell us about Hop Haze. So this is where I get my little demonstration out, isn't it? Yeah. So I have a little vial of, uh, of Hop Haze here and a very nice little glass of beer behind me. We can see here that it's got a little bit of haze to it. Yeah. It is a different beer to what I've got in front of me, so I'm not going to name names. And so we've got a little tiny bit of hop haze on there and we can see already the haze stability and we're talking tiny tiny we're talking here. milliliters there and look at that the issue i think a lot of us have had in the homebrew sphere and in the commercial side is brewing a delicious new england and then <laughs> two weeks later it's absolutely yeah, it's crystal clear and not just through. that style either we've had other styles of beer that actually start to drop bright after after an amount of time in the keg hefeweizen for example you know that you want it you want it to be cloudy but it it they can drop clear especially if you're force carbonating from the keg and just to demonstrate it because you're using it in such low doses it's Completely flavourless. Completely flavourless yeah. at low doses. Um, and it gives you that haziness. So you've had tests done on this and actually that haze will now stay in the beer. It's like so period. much more stable. Yeah. So much more stable than even naturally occurring. 
um, haze, um, it will last almost indefinitely. Really, at the very heart of starting Malt Miller, a massive part of it was being able to allow home brewers to brew with ingredients that are exactly the same as you use in the commercial world. And actually partnering with Barthas X has really enabled us to do that. It's great working alongside Malt Miller because so many home brewers have gone on to bigger and better things. Sure. It's when we meet other brewers and they go, I know you guys, I started off using your kit. Exactly that. And it's fantastic to be able to bring this level of commercial brewing that 10 years ago, you couldn't be able to get to the wider audience. Exactly, and actually, just going back to last night um, with Red and Amateur Brewers, the, the amount of knowledge that home brewers have now, and with the help from the commercial world as well, the accessibility of ingredients and information of how to use those ingredients is absolutely fantastic. It's the home brewers are the roots, the, the grassroots of this entire industry and helping them out helps out everyone. Yeah. Better education, better ingredients, better beer at the end of the day. Awesome, that's what we need. There we go. We always enjoy these meet the supplier events. This one has been absolutely fantastic. A massive shout out to both Reading Amateur Brewers, who were fantastic hosts last night, along with uh, Double Barrel. Their tap room is absolutely fantastic, and they had some awesome beers on tap last night. And obviously, massive thanks to uh, Tom and to Bath Hass X. Having the res resource of Bath Hass behind us is absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have been invited. Awesome.